What's up, y'all? It's Mary Beth Eversole, the allergy actress, and I am here today with my very special guest and friend, Laura Leo Shell, hey. who is a fellow actress and animal lover. Yes. And uh, she's got the most adorable dog. I'm like, oh, and <laughs> like my kitties, and we talk about our animals, and it's so cute. And the reason we're talking about animals right now is because pets get allergies too. Yes, they do. Yeah, Absolutely. and it's a lot of times it comes from their food. Mm -hmm. And so today, what are we doing? We are making allergy-friendly dog food. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, all of the ingredients that are in front of us right now are just people food. Absolutely. And it's like, even this recipe put together, you could eat as Absolutely. a human. And it would yep. taste fine. And it, you know, so, yeah, I think it's great. So why don't we get to the ingredients and we'll show you what we're talking about. Okay, so here come the ingredients. Yeah. All right, so let's go with the uh, spinach. We're going to start with the spinach. Yeah, so it's frozen. Yes. And you, 10 ounces. Correct. You can do fresh, the vegetables. Okay. However, for cost effective, frozen is just as good. It's going to cook down anyway, so yeah. you might as well. Yeah, and, and just remember that the water content will be higher if you use frozen, so <laughs> you may want to use less water in your stock because you already have it from right. frozen. And correct. it's great. Greens are great for animals. They, they are. Iron, just like humans. They give mm -hmm. you a lot of nutrients. So, all right, the next thing we had, let's see, we have the uh, sweet. Potatoes. Yes. Now, sweet potatoes, y'all. This this is a sweet potato. Okay. It's white. It's white. Mm -hmm. uh, every everyone's like, what? Sweet potatoes are orange? No, sweet potatoes are white. Yams. Are Yams orange. are orange. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's and I know they say, but the recipe is that sweet potato. Well, it's because it's sweet. But yams are orange. Sweet potatoes are white. A lot of people don't know that. Exactly. Um, the cool thing about sweet potatoes is they are starchy. Um, but less than potatoes, and Correct. they have a sweet uh, thing to that. They're healthy. Yeah, they're they good on the glycemic they, index. So. Exactly. And the thing is, I actually sometimes trick my family, and I make sweet potatoes and say they're mashed potato. I make them into mashed potatoes and say they're a russet potato because you don't have to add as much butter, and, and it, they're sweet. Yeah. And they're better for you. Yeah. yeah. And they really are good for you. So, all right. And that was um, how many cups? That's two cups. Two cups. Mm -hmm. Two cups. Okay. Next we have our frozen vegetables. More frozen vegetables. Yes. And um, this one calls for two cups of frozen vegetables. We decided to do a mix. Right. So I did a half a cup of each of these. And what do we have Correct. in here? We have carrots, um, cauliflower, green beans, and hiding underneath the famous broccoli. Broccoli, yummy. Gets stuck in your teeth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it does. <laughs> um, and again, just more vegetables, more nutrients, really good for the pets. Yes. All right. All right, so then what do we have? Let's see. We're on to the lentils. Oh, lentils, yes. Okay, so I've talked about lentils on this show before. You can, uh, so there's several different kinds of lentils that cook at the same time, mm -hmm. um, which is about 40 minutes. Right. And that is green lentils, brown lentils, yellow lentils, and I believe the orange. Mm -hmm. There are also red lentils, but they cook faster. Right. So if you're going to use red, use only red, okay? Right. Otherwise, you could probably mix yellow, brown, and green. You could, to. yeah, for, for color. Make it, it more colorful, even though exactly. the dogs probably don't care about they that. So. <laughs> um, I just buy these in a package at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, you do um, want to either pick through or possibly rinse, just to make yeah. sure that there's not any... Rocks? Rocks. And those hard little yeah. things. Because, I mean, if you don't like that, imagine how your dog or cat feels. Exactly. Probably, like I said, my cat probably would never, ever eat anything I gave her again if I gave her lentil rocks. And crop, and, yeah. Correct. And then the other thing, the last thing you want is to crack your dog's tooth because that's a whole other set of issues. Oh my and gosh. Dental expenses for animals. Don't even get me started. Exactly. Okay. So what's next? <laughs> okay, so next we are going to do, let's do the cottage cheese. Okay, yes. We have cottage cheese. Okay, and so is it just regular old cottage it's cheese? It's regular cottage cheese. I don't buy low fat. I just buy the fat... Okay. I just buy the regular cottage cheese. Yeah, and it gets a little bit of dairy in there, yep. but it's a healthy dairy. And so um, cottage cheese is like the best probably if you're going for um, real cow's milk stuff. Correct. Cottage cheese is the best. Um, it's one cup, mm -hmm. and yeah, it just goes in with everything else. Exactly. So, and kitty cats can have cheese too, just small amounts. Right. So, and the doggies... Uh, my parents and my sister give cheese as a treat to their dogs. Oh, so nice. I know the dogs love cheese. So They do. All right. So next we have got our dried, um, I always call it basil. It's not basil. No, this is parsley. Dried this parsley. parsley yes. yes. And um, half a cup. Yes. And it's just dried. Yep. It can you use fresh? You know... Yeah, I guess you could. Um, it's just easier measurement-wise. Exactly, <laughs> and fr uh, dried parsley is you can it actually keeps well. Yes, and you can buy it in large containers yeah. at your grocery store. Because um, how often do you make this dog food? 
well, the, the recipe, the uh, amount we're making today is for like, it lasts me a week. Um, you, gotta, you gotta remember, I have two dogs and they are large dogs. So mm -hmm. I give them a cup of, actually I give them two cups a day, one in the morning and one in the evening. Okay. And this lasts. Yeah, and it lasts for a while. Mm -hmm. So you can always double the recipe you if can. you've got big dogs yes, and multiple dogs. You could actually freeze it too. Ooh, that's um, good. I don't. I just I have enough space in my refrigerator, and it, it doesn't it doesn't spoil. Yeah, I mean because I make it for a week. Yeah, I don't make it for two they or just, three weeks. They it's eat just, it. And they're yeah. like, mm, mom, this is good. Exactly. So yeah. Okay. Um. So then next we have got the. Uh, we could do the basil next. Oh, basil. Yes. Yes. Basil is an eighth of a cup. The rest of, of the um. Spices are all an eighth of a cup. Yes, and I know nobody has an eighth of a cup in their measuring, so just do half of the quarter cup. Exactly. Okay? And uh, basil is just a tasty herb. It's mm -hmm. got good benefits. Um, it's it's good oh, for and kind it, of antioxidant, and it smells, smells good. Smells really yeah. good. Yeah. It's yummy. So, so then we have our um, olive oil. Yes. Which is uh, just a it's a quarter cup, half cup, How many eighth cups? of a cup too. Eighth of a cup. Oh, yep. Eighth of a Easy cup. Easy to remember. So, and that one I put in like my wet measuring cup. Yes. Um, and I just did halfway up to the quarter. You just um, eyeball it. Exactly. It's not really, you don't have to be exact with no, this. No, yeah. I mean, so. just like any recipe, it can be a little bit, it's not. Yeah. And exact. you can even taste it as you're going because it's yeah. all food you can it eat. Is. If you eat chicken. I don't eat chicken. I don't eat chicken either. But, but if you eat chicken, great. Yep. <laughs> okay, so the next thing. This is one of my favorite this spices. Turmeric. The anti inflammatory benefits of turmeric. Mm -hmm. Are, like that's what they suggest as a spice for people with allergies and exactly. so if your animal has allergies this is one of the best things that you can put in their food mm -hmm. turmeric and it gives it a really pretty color it not does. that the dogs or cats care about that but it does give it a nice yellow color and so. your sweater and is, so, oh, she's my wearing sweater, turmeric today look at this I matched my turmeric today so um, okay yeah and then we have rosemary where is the rosemary? The rosemary is over here okay so another eighth of a cup of Correct. rosemary mm -hmm. And uh, rosemary is nice because when you cook it, it doesn't cook fully down. It never fully softens. Right. And so it's a little crunch, and it's got a lot of flavor profile. It does, so and it smells wonderful. good, too. Yeah, we got mm, mm, mm. Ah. <laughs> And then we have garlic. So it's right. dried minced garlic. Correct. And again, it's dried because that keeps really well. It does. So. Now, this is an optional um, ingredient. Check with your vet before you add this to mm. your dog food. Because um, it's... It's controversy. There's it is. Possible... Some people think say it's toxic. I mean, my dogs are basically, I would say street dogs. They came <laughs> from the street, literally. Yeah. My husband picked them up off the street. They were strays. And they're Heinz 57. They're, they're mixes. Yeah. So they're they're not purebreds. Um, and so they've been eating this for five years, right? Yes, exactly. With the garlic. Correct. And they're fine. They're, they're In fed. fact, they're more healthy than they would be the normal 14 year old dog exactly so. and the other thing is garlic is also um an anti-flea repellent Ooh, so which is really awesome. great because all that flea medication if you purchase it from the store mm -hmm. it's so toxic i mean speaking of toxicity mm -hmm. that stuff is is not good for you <laughs> exactly actually a couple friends of mine have used the kind where you put it on their neck mm -hmm. and the fur and they've actually burned the skin to the point where the fur won't even grow back uh, yeah, and so, they still so. have fleas so yeah, and it's you, it's hit or miss, and sometimes you have to do multiple time tri types of treatments. Exactly. The collar that you know, and you don't. So if you can find a natural way to exactly. get rid of those fleas, and believe me, you do not want fleas. We had fleas in our house with the kitty cats, and no. that was not fun. So uh, my dogs have never had fleas. Lucky. And they're outside. Or maybe, maybe they, smart. Maybe yep. not lucky. Maybe smart. They go outside all the time so that's not and they're they're outside and inside well, so California is they abundant with fleas so we the are. fact that your dogs go outside and they they have that and you haven't had fleas that's saying something yep. so okay so then we have our um, so we have our stock right and this is what comes out of cooking down the chicken correct okay. absolutely yeah and then you add a little bit of water sometimes right what yeah. I do is I um, Fill my stock pot with about six to eight cups of water, mm -hmm. and then I add the raw chicken. Okay. And I s boil it first for about five to ten minutes. Then I turn it down and simmer it for about four to six hours. Um, so it's a it's a lengthy process. This is a lengthy process, but it's something that as long as you're home, Correct. you can put it on your back burner exactly. on simmer and forget mm -hmm. about it for four to six hours. Just to make sure you set your alarm. Okay? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So um, so that's what the stock comes from. Yeah, and then um, after and the four to six hours, then I remove the chicken thighs. 
Okay, and you debone them, right? Correct. Okay, and leave the stock in the pot because Correct. you'll see in the next step that what we're going to do with that. But you debone the chicken. Correct. Which here well, is I, the chicken. I let the chicken cool. Mm -hmm. It will be really, really hot. Okay. So basically, I take out the chicken, let it uh, sit, and sometimes I just put it in the refrigerator um, to let it cool off. Okay. Um, and then you debone. Correct. And then you use these pretty little things right here. And yep. You shred, shred, shred. Exactly. So, and if you're squeamish about that, use forks. Or you could also um, either buy a meat grinder or you can get an attachment for your mixer. Um, that's up to you. Yeah. And you have to clean that whole thing too. Right. I just find that it's not, it doesn't bother me to just shred it. Or if you have very finicky cats like I do, <laughs> one likes pate and one likes shredded. So then you would need both. <laughs> That's crazy. So I know. So yeah, this is about 1.5 pounds. Correct. Of what it is, dye. is correct. When I buy it at the grocery okay. store, um, I buy a usually about two pounds because I want to allow for the taking the bones out and also boiling it down. Gotcha. Cool. Yep. All right. Well, why don't we show them how to put it together? Let's yeah. go to the main events. Okay, so here we are at the main event, right. and we're going to put pretty much just everything in the pot, right? Exactly. So the stock is already in here because yes. you would have cooked the chicken down. Correct. And you leave the stock in there. So now, what do we do next? Okay, first we're going to put in the lentils. Lentils! Woohoo! And what is the temperature that you have? Um, it's on uh, just a simmer, the same simmer, simmer that you had it okay. on. Yep. Okay. So you simmer it. It stays on that. And then do you cook the lentils down at all? Or? Nope. nope. We just okay. go ahead. I put the sweet potatoes in next. Sweet potatoes. I'm just going to say Okay. <laughs> and I just, I just like, you know, kind of layer it. Yeah. Not for any particular reason. Cool. Then we'll do the... Spinach? Um, yep. Yeah. Spinach. Last spinach. And remember, if you're okay. using frozen, it's going to add to the liquid value of this. So you may want to have less water in your stock. Right. Okay. And then what? And More then vegetables. vegetables. More frozen vegetables. Yep. I'll eat those. Add that all in there. Okay. Let's do, just, I kind of like stir this up. Yeah. Now what I do is I will let this sit and simmer on the stove for about two hours. Basically okay. I want the carrots to be a little mushy and I also want the sweet potato to like, if you push it, it just mushes. Like almost okay. like to be a mashed potato. Okay. Okay. Cool. So once it's simmered for a while, you can just go ahead and add your, um, Spices. spices. So first we have the basil. Spices. <laughs> we have the rosemary. Parsley. Parsley. <laughs> and uh, let's do the turmeric. Oh, turmeric. Yeah. Turmeric. The uh, the uh, anti-inflammatory. Get all anti that turmeric. Make sure you get all of it in there. <laughs> the yellow stuff. Yeah. The yellow. 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 Let's do the yellow. This is the olive oil. Yes, the olive oil. And then we can do the controversy. Yes, this is the garlic. Yes. We add that in. And I stir that up. Stir, nice. stir, stir. Make sure it's all stirred together. Yes, and it's like do, do, do. yummy, cookie, cooking, yummy, cook it down. Right. Everything's soft. So now that it's and you all... And you don't ever turn the heat up. It's just on low? Yep. Okay. I just leave it on low. I will put the lid on it and just let it simmer, like okay. I said, for, you know, sometimes two hours, sometimes three hours. It, it, so Before it, you add the herbs. It just depends. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah I, do. I mean, you can add all of it. You can yeah. add all of it. Now, once it's finished cooking and the, basically my test is if the sweet potato is kind Soft. of mushy. Yeah. Then I add... The dairy. The dairy. The cottage cheese. Yep. So we'll just add that in real quick. Awesome. I bet that my sister's dog, Henry, would love this. Absolutely. Shout I don't out know, to Henry. Personally, I don't know any dog that wouldn't love this. And you said your cats even like it. I do occasionally, if I run out of cat food, um, I will give them a little scoop. And it works. Yeah. There's nothing in it. I have did the research to make sure. Um, Basically, cats, when I was doing research on cat food, um, on grain-free homemade cat food, they really stressed to use raw chicken because cats in the wild would eat raw birds. However, I just really don't want to deal with raw chicken, so I buy my cat food. Yeah. Yep. All right. And then... And then once this is all cooked and it's stirred all up, what I do is just go ahead and add my chicken in. Awesome. And while we're adding that... 
So why did you, what, you, you said it was kind of like the dog food, the national dog food brands. Well, what I, you know, I took my, I was talking to my vet and we were talking about what the dogs ate and they were about nine turning ten and I knew they were getting to be senior dogs and Where, which is when health issues really start yes happening. and she I, she was asking what I fed them and I said well I you know the national brand from the from the grocery store and she said well you know that's really like just eating fast food and I was shocked I never thought I was like really I mean and like the bad fast food yeah not the like healthy fast food that Right. Exists nowadays. Just like stopping to a burger place and getting a burger or stocking it at stopping at you know, any yeah. fast food restaurant. And I was like, great, I'm feeding my animals fast food. Great. That's not good. Yeah. So I talked to her about it and she gave me some suggestions of uh, dog foods that I can find at pet stores that were grain free and things They're like that. So expensive. But it was like seventy five dollars for a bag of dog food that would last me two weeks. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, this was There's really be ridiculous. A way. Yeah. And so one night I was just doing some research online and I came I, I found a few recipes mm -hmm. and I looked at the ingredients and I was like I priced it kind of out myself and the timing, and I thought this was just a, the best thing to do. Yeah. So of course I did con uh, call my vet, and I spoke with her, and I said I found these dog food recipes. What do you think? And she said all the ingredients she felt was fine with, and everything was covered. You know, because one thing I didn't want to leave out was some ingredient that would damage them and not, you know, have yeah. something that they need. So. That's how I came up with this recipe. So, and okay, so you, your dogs are 14. Yes. Mm -hmm. And doing act, acting like 10-year-olds. Exactly. And they have, I, I basically have no health issues. We go to the vet once a year for their annual checkup. That's and unheard of. Fantastic. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, feed this to your dogs. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. Okay, well, Laura Lee, this is great. Yeah. Um, so, then once the chicken is in, how long do you cook it? Um, basically, it's done. I turn it off. Oh, okay. And then I have a um, storage plastic container, and I just put this in the storage plastic container, put it in my refrigerator, and every day I give them a cup in the morning, in the mo cup in the morning, and a cup at night. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I give them a little bit in the afternoon if they like, you, you know, they're like, like, hey, mommy, I want Please give me some more, yeah. more. <laughs> and that's it. All right, you guys, so we are all cooked up, yep. and we have put this in a lovely little bowl, um, and it's, I think it's its that nice turmeric color, mm -hmm. and it is. Um, while we're talking and finishing up, we're going to say that uh, Laura Lee took some wonderful pictures of Woody eating this yummy, yummy meal this morning, Yes. and he wouldn't even look up at the camera, right? No, because I, I tried to get him, I, I actually had to pick the food bowl up to get him to look up, and he just wanted to because eat. Because he was enjoying it so much. He so loves his food. I think that wh whoever you try this with, you know, I think they'll love it. And Absolutely. I mean, aren't dogs and cats always begging for people food anyway? Yes, they are. So like, why exactly. not give it to them and know that it's healthy, healthy for them? So, um, I just want to say thank you, Laura Lee, for being on today. And everybody, please spay and neuter your pets. Let's, Absolutely. Let's, let's uh, end this overpopulation so that we can clear out the shelters yes. in a good way. And and yeah, and feed your pets healthy, healthy things. Pay attention to if they're scratching, if they have mood issues, any of that, because that could be an indication that they do have an allergy, and mm -hmm. you want to always check with your vet. Yes. But I yes. think, you know, take a recipe and say, is this okay for my dog? Is this okay for my cat? And if they say yes, do it, because first of all, it's cheaper. It is, actually. Yeah. It really is cheaper. It is, you know, it does take a little time. <laughs> but, but you can freeze it. Exactly. Like, and, you know, eight hours, we're all usually at it. home doing something for eight hours, yeah. and this cooks... You know, down by itself for most of the time, and you just throw all the ingredients together. Imagine the amount of time you're saving going to the vet. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so yeah. Anyway, Laura Lee, thank you so much for being on. How can we reach out to you just to, and see what you're up to? Oh well, you can reach me. Uh, my email is lloshell at aol dot com. You can see that below. My website is lauraleeoshell dot com. Mm -hmm. And she is a fantastic actress, y'all. So please check her out and uh, let's save some animals, shall we? Absolutely. This is the allergy actress Mary Beth Eversole with guest Laura Leo Shell signing off for now.